In this tutorial we're going to have a look at the slice to new MIDI track feature in Live 7. And what that basically allows us to do is to take a sample, slice it up into lots of different pieces, and each of those pieces is loaded into a simpler instrument, and all of those simplers are loaded into a drum rack, and that drum rack is inserted onto a new MIDI track, and a new MIDI clip is also created containing all of the notes that are chromatically arranged to play all of those slices one by one so that if you then trigger that clip it sounds like the original sample. Now this is really handy for taking a sample and slicing it all up and jumbling up all the slices so they play in a different order. Or we can just take a drum loop and extract all the individual drum hits so that we can make our own drum kit out of them. Or we can take a vocal sample and scramble it up or extract individual words and play those words on a keyboard. All the chains are laid out on, across the MIDI keyboard automatically so that you can play any of the slices on the keyboard. Basically it just opens up a lot of creative possibilities and you can have a lot of fun by slicing up samples and playing them on the MIDI keyboard. It's actually one of my favourite features of Live 7. So we're going to start by slicing up a pretty ordinary beatbox sample that I've quickly recorded myself. And I really wanted to just illustrate that you can start with pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be well recorded or played particularly well in time. And once you start slicing it all up and changing it all about, you can actually do quite a lot with it. So over the course of the next few tutorials, we're going to start building a drum kit out of the slices from this beatbox sample. So to start with, you can see the sample highlighted here in the browser. It's this one, Bad Beatbox 01. And if we just preview it, and you can hear that's not going to give Kid Beyond a run for his money. So you can access this Slice to New MIDI Track feature directly from the browser just by right clicking and it's there in the context menu, Slice to New MIDI Track. Or you can hold Control and click if you're on a Mac with a one button mouse. And it brings up this dialog here that tells us a little bit about the sample. At the moment it's set to create one slice per 16th note. And it tells us here that the current clip region is 8.2 on beats. This will result in 33 slices. So we can tell by looking at this that it's not been trimmed to the nearest bar or even beat. Because two bars would be 8 beats in a 4-4 time signature. And this is 8.21 beats. So that tells us that it's not been trimmed or cropped. But we can pretty much tell that anyway just from previewing the file and the silence we heard at the start before it played. So if we just change this here to warp marker, then it tells us this will result in one slices. So we're not using Ableton Live for the grammar lessons. So this tells us that this sample hasn't been warped, or at least there's only one warp marker in this sample. So what all of this really tells us is that slicing directly from the browser is probably not the best way to slice this particular sample. So we'll hit cancel and we'll drag it to an audio track so that we can edit it first. So if we double click on that, we can see there's a whole bar of nothing really at the start here, so that's not much use. And it says here that the sample is two bars in length, and we only really want this second bar here. So we'll change it to one bar just by selecting this field here, and entering a one, and hitting enter. So you can see here that it's selected the wrong bar, so if we just select the loop brace and hit the up arrow on the keyboard, and it skips it forward to the next bar. So that's looking pretty okay now. So if we just trigger that clip now, we can see that loops pretty well, except you can just tell by looking at it here that there's a bit of a gap there before the first beat. So if we played that along to a click track, you can hear it's out of time. So we want to just create a warp marker there and drag it forward so it starts at the beginning of the beat and hit play. It's still not brilliant because you can see some of these other beats are off as well, but for now we're just going to worry about this first beat because I'm going to come back later on and warp it properly and slice to warp markers later. For now we're just going to warp to 16th notes. So if we right click on the clip view, slice to new MIDI track is in the context there, or we can also do it on the clip, slice to new MIDI track. 
And we're going to go for create one slice per sixteenth note. Current clip region is four beats long, so that's one bar, which sounds right. This will result in 16 slices, so that sounds pretty right. So for slicing preset, we're just going to go with built in. We can actually create our own presets using the default folders, but we're going to cover that in another tutorial. So for the moment, we're just going to go with the built in preset that is here by default. So if we just click OK, And you can see it's created a new MIDI track here and inserted that clip with all the notes laid out. And a drum rack's been inserted, and you can see on all the pads there, there's our 16 slices laid out. And if we double click on one of them, it brings up the simpler. And you can see what's happened here is it hasn't cut the sample up into lots of different audio files. Instead, what's happened is the original sample has been loaded into each simpler in this rack and a region has been created which uh, tells it which slice to play or which part of that sample to play. This is handy for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it doesn't create a whole bunch of audio files on your hard drive. But secondly, it allows us to change the start position and length of the region so that we have the freedom to change the slice later on. So this way it gives us a bit more flexibility and it means that the slices are not permanent. We can always change them if we need to. So if we go through each of these regions, you can see the region length stays the same, but it changes position. If we go back to slice five here, you can see because I didn't warp it, there's a bit of a gap at the start of that beat there. Now that's kind of important because if you then try and trigger that, it's not so easy to tell on this because it's a very small gap, but if we drag it out a bit more just to illustrate, you can hear that's, that's going to add a little bit of silence at the start of that beat, and that's going to make it play out of time because we really need that to start dead on the beat. So that's really not the best way to have it working. So obviously it's quite easy to just move that start marker. That's one way of fixing that but once you start going through all these different slices it can get quite fiddly and given that the drum rack goes all the way up to 128 slices or chains then it could be quite a pain having to go through and do that to every single one so really the best way to fix that is really to warp the sample before you slice it so we'll go back to that sample now and we'll go ahead and create some warp markers. Now I'm going to create 16 warp markers here. And in reality, this sample doesn't actually need 16 warp markers. None of the beats are actually 16ths. They're all eighth notes or even quarter notes. But the reason I'm creating 16 warp markers is for a couple of reasons. Well, basically, it's a very quick and easy way to create a new drum rack with 16 slots in it, with all the pads that are visible already filled up with a simpler instrument. So if we're building a drum kit, as we are in this particular case, then that's a really easy way of just very quickly creating a track with one already on it, where we can just easily change the samples. But the other reason is because it'll make it easier to sequence later on. Because we are working in a 4-4 time signature, uh, 16 is a good division of a bar in 4-4. It means that once we start sequencing, if we use an arpeggiator, for example, to play the slices, then we can set that to 16 and it plays all the slices. And likewise, we can use Live's groove settings here. We can set that to 16 and it will be able to add a groove to it. It will just make it a lot easier for sequencing later on because if we have to start worrying about how many slices there are and there's an odd number and then we have to kind of figure out how many will fit to a bar, then that's just going to create a lot of complications for ourselves later on. So 16 is a good number. So we'll just slice this one to new MIDI track. And this time we'll set this to warp marker. We'll still go with the built-in preset. 
And now if we go to slice 5, because we know that one was off, we can see it's OK now. So that's fixed that's problem. But now if we have a look at these clips, when we look at the first one, because we slice to 16 even slices, then all the slices are exactly one sixteenth note long, and they all fall on the sixteenth. So they're perfectly quantized. But if you look at this clip here, you can see that they're all off. They're all in kind of really strange places. And that kind of seems a bit random. It doesn't look like there's any kind of order to it. Basically, the reason for that is when we warped this clip here, what we were doing was we were telling live where all the beats should go. And so what these notes are now is a MIDI representation of those notes. So what that's done is it's preserved the natural groove within that sample. So if you had a drum loop, for example, that was played by a real drummer and it had a natural kind of groove to it, then uh, this would preserve that groove. Now this is a kind of an awkward thing to get your head around at first when slicing and warping or warping to slice in live because it means that when you actually warp the sample you have to effectively quantize that beat. So if the loop you're working on has a groove you have to get rid of that groove by sticking all the warp markers right at the start of the beats and so that when you then play that loop it's going to be rigidly quantized and that groove will have all gone completely. Which is a kind of a, not a natural thing to do at first. You feel kind of a bit strange, like getting rid of all that groove. You kind of don't really want to do it. But it's a necessary evil. You have to do that in order to allow the MIDI clip to retain the groove. And a really cool byproduct of this is that you can then use this MIDI clip on a different drum kit or a different track and what you'd be effectively doing is creating a groove template. So the MIDI clip that you've created by warping that clip and slicing it is then a groove template that you can apply to any other drum kit or track. So you could drag that MIDI clip to the browser and save it as a live clip and then use it in any other set in the future. So if you've got a whole library full of drum loops that have got really nice grooves that you like and you want to use them on different kits or use different sounds, then you could just go through and warp them like we did here by putting a warp marker dead on every single beat and basically getting rid of that groove. Then slice them, make your own new MIDI clips and save them to the browser or to wherever. And you've then got a whole bunch of groove templates that you can use later on. We might go over doing that in another tutorial. Now there may be other situations where you want to use the warp marker method to slice samples, but you don't want to keep that groove. Now this could be for any number of reasons. Either you just want to use the warp marker method so that you can make sure that all the beats start dead on, or it might just be that you've already warped some samples before and you just now want to slice them. You can very easily get around this basically by selecting inside the clip and hitting Control A on the PC or Command A on Mac to select them all and then Control U or Command U to bring up the quantize dialog and then you can just quantize them that way. And that way now you can use Live's groove settings. So if we just set this to swing 8 and stick the groove up to about 50%, just use these extreme settings just so we can hear it properly and make sure we trigger the right clip so you can hear that's using lives groove now and this is kind of something that you might need to think about if you're using lives groove throughout your track that you're making and all the other tracks are using lives groove but then you slice up a sample that has its own groove then once you put them together, it could create some problems. They could have some notes that clash a little bit or a little bit out of time with each other. So there might be situations where you actually need to get rid of the natural groove in the clip. So that's an important thing to consider. But for now, that's pretty much it for slicing.
over the next few tutorials we're going to start making our kit and to start off with we're going to have a look at slice one and we're going to make that into a real sounding kick we're going to do a few little things to that and you might be quite surprised by the results okay that's it thanks for watching we'll see you next time